Hello friends, this video on cell cycle and cell division part 6 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we will talk about the first type of cell division in eukaryotes that is mitosis. So let us see what is mitosis, how it takes place, what are the different stages involved in it. So the first thing, what is mitosis? Now the name itself is quite weird, mitosis, don't know from where they got this name. So basically they got it from a Greek word mitos which means thread. Now why do they call this thread? That we'll get to know very soon. So it is a process of forming identical daughter cells by replicating and dividing the chromosomes. So here also, in, by the end of mitosis, you will see that the daughter cells which have been produced, they are exactly identical to each other and they are identical to their parent cells as well. Now how this process takes place? It takes place, there are two concepts behind mitosis. One is replication and the second is division. So it will replicate and then divide. Replicate means the DNA will replicate. Like one set of DNA will form two set of DNA and then it will divide. So it will give one set of DNA to one daughter cell, the second set of DNA to the second daughter cell. So very simple funda. Just replicate and divide. Replicate, divide. Replicate the DNA and then divide it amongst the daughter cells. So here one parent cell will form two daughter cells which will be exactly identical to the parent cell. So if you see this is the uh, it is somewhat similar to binary fission there also the daughter cells were exactly identical but we will see how it is different. So you can understand the process of mitosis with this simple example. Let us suppose this teacher is teaching in a class where she has multiple students almost you can see some six of them are there. Now she wants to distribute these notes but she has only one copy of the notes. So how can she give it to all the six students? Because she just have one copy. So what will she do? She will get a Xerox done of the same notes. Now she'll get multiple copies of the same notes and then distribute each copy to each student. So what did she do? She replicated, that is she copied, she made multiple copies of the original document and then she divided it amongst all the students. So similar is the concept of mitosis. The DNA gets replicated, so different copies, I mean more copies of DNA are formed and then it is divided to the daughter cells. That is the simple logic or that is the simple funda. Now how that happens, how that copying happens, how that division happens, that we will see in the step by step process of mitosis. So here also, if this is your parent cell, it will form two daughter cells which are identical to the parent cell as well as to each other. Again, each of them will form more daughter cells which will be identical to each other and also identical to the parent cell. So that is the process of mitosis. So now that we have got a basic idea about what is mitosis, let us see where does mitosis occur. So where can we see this? So it occurs in diploid somatic cells of animals. Now few terms which are no more new to you because we have already spoken about these terms. What is diploid and what is somatic cells? Okay, talking about diploid, we uh, spoke about it that there are two types of cells based on the number of chromosomes which they have. One is haploid and the other one is diploid. So diploid is that type of a cell which has two N chromosomes. That means it has two sets of the same chromosomes. They are diploid. Di, di means two. Haploid are those which has one set of chromosomes. So they are, that is represented by N. So haploid is N and diploid is 2N. So mitosis generally occur in diploid somatic cells of animals. Somatic cells are nothing but the body cells. So when you talk about animals, they have got two types of cells in their body. One is the body cells, the somatic cells. The other one is the uh, specialized sex cells or the gametes. So these body cells are all diploid, whereas the specialized sex cells are haploid. For example, in human beings also, they have total 46 chromosomes or you can say 23 pairs of chromosomes. Out of that, 22 pairs are somatic cells which are deployed, whereas one pair is uh, the specialized sex cells which are haploid. So mitosis occurs in deployed somatic cells of animals, whereas 
So if you talk about animals, as I said, all the cells except the sex cells are all diploid. It, however, it occurs in both diploid and haploid cells of plants. So when you talk about plants, there we can see mitosis in haploid cells as well. So for example, in ferns, if you look at the uh, life cycle of a fern, we have discussed about the life cycle of fern in our previous lessons, where we saw that uh, it comes across a, 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 a phase called prothallus, which is haploid. So prothallus in sp prothallus is a haploid phase in the life cycle of fern. So alternation of generation occurs in case of ferns. So here mitosis take place in case of haploid cells as well. Similarly, there are other examples, for example, the sporangia of certain ascomycetes, uh, that is the fungi, there are also uh, mitosis occur in haploid cells. So mitosis is something which is very common for diploid cells, whether we talk about animals or plants. But in case of animals, it doesn't occur in haploid cells, whereas in plants, it also occurs in haploid cells. So now we will talk about mitosis as a phase in the cell cycle. So we spoke about the cell cycle. So what was the first stage? First stage was the interphase. There we discussed about G1, S and G2 phase. Now the next phase is the mitotic phase or the M phase as we say it. So what happens in this phase of the cell cycle? Here, as I have mentioned before also, that this is the most dramatic period of the cell cycle because so many new things happen here, new cells are formed, There's so many excitement here. So that is why it is the most dramatic phase. Now, you might wonder why is it that mitosis happens only in case of eukaryotes and not in prokaryotes? That is because in prokaryotes, we do not have any structure called nucleus or nuclear membrane. Whereas in eukaryotes, we have a specific nuclear membrane. Now, because of this difference, this, this difference actually makes a huge, uh, huge difference in the way they divide. However, the end result of mitosis and the end result of binary fission is the same. In both the cases, you get identical daughter cells. But because of the difference in their structures, the method is different in both of them. Now, daughter chromosomes produced are exact replicas of parent chromosomes. So, if these are the daughter chromosomes, they both look alike as well as they look exactly similar to their parent. It is also known as equational division. So, another important point to note here. Why is mitosis called equational division? So, equational, this is derived from the term equal because the daughter cells which are produced they are equal that means they are exactly same to same that is why it is known as equational division so if you have a parent cell it gives rise to two identical daughter cells so that means the parent cell is dividing things equally between both the daughter cells so that both of them are exactly similar this occurs in eukaryotes as i mentioned before it is not seen in prokaryotes because prokaryotes do not have nuclear membrane nucleus or nucleolus now why do you need nuclear membrane nucleus and all those stuffs for mitosis that you will get to know when we study the process of mitosis in detail now this entire process of mitosis is divided into several stages now, since this mitosis is one complete process, it is not like a, it, it is not made up of small, small sub processes. It is not like that. It is just one single process. So the segregation of mitosis into different stages was quite difficult because uh, not always you can very distinctly distinguish between two stages. So there is no specific defined boundary line between any two stages. So, so no, that not that specific boundary line is defined. But still based upon uh, the observation and based upon the studies, mitosis have been broadly classified into two phases, karyokinesis and cytokinesis. So now, now I'm talking about the mitotic phase of the cell cycle. So when you talk about the cell cycle, the M phase, 
This karyokinases and cytokinases, these together constitute the M phase or the mitotic phase of the cell cycle. So what is karyokinases? The word karyo means nucleus. And the word cyto is derived from cytoplasm. And kinases, kinases is derived from the word kinetic. You would have heard of kinetic energy. What is that kinetic energy? Energy due to motion. So kinetic is something related to motion. So this kinesis is also something related to movement or motion. So karyokinesis is nucleus movement. What does that mean? It means division of the nucleus. So when the nucleus of the parent cell divides, that is called karyokinesis. And when the cytoplasm of the parent cell divides, then it is called cytokinesis. Now these two together constitute the mitotic phase of the cell cycle. Now just imagine, let us suppose you have one cell and inside you have a nucleus. Now once the karyokinesis, that means the nucleus divides, so the cell is still the same but the nucleus divides into two halves this way. Now in the second half that is cytokinesis, this entire thing is cytoplasm. Now this cytoplasm also gets divided into two halves. So what will you get? You will get two cells and exactly that is what is happening in this process as well. So basically the parent cell is getting divided into two daughter cells. How that division is happening? First the nucleus gets divided which is karyokinesis. That is followed by the division of the cytoplasm called cytokinesis. Now when you talk about uh, karyokinesis, again in karyokinesis there are many steps which together leads to the division of the nucleus. So it is divided into four stages. Again they are also uh, not very distinct as they are very closely related. So these stages are prophase, metaphase, anaphase and telophase. Now we will talk about each of these phases in detail and we will try to see what exactly happens in each of these phases. Now these days in uh, many of the textbooks they have also included another phase called pro-metaphase. Now as I said this pro-phase also many at many places you will see that it has been further classified as early pro-phase, late pro-phase, metaphase again you will have something called pre-metaphase then late metaphase. So we will now talk about each of, we will first talk about karyokinesis and in order to understand karyokinesis we will talk step by step. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.